great to see you today. Hope you've had a really good week. Hope you've you've experienced the Holy Spirit this week after our time together last week and inviting him into our hearts. So let's start on this week. Sarah. Yeah, fantastic. So as we've done the last couple of weeks, let's welcome the Holy Spirit in. Come on in, Holy Spirit. Come on in, Holy Spirit. Come even closer. Come even closer. Come fill us more with your love. Come fill us more with your love. <laughs> One of our favourite worship songs at the moment is God Sing On. We know that quite a lot of you like that. It's all about the armour of God. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at what it all means. We'll sing it later on, but right now, we're going to focus on Jesus. We're going to enjoy him. We're going to sing to him. We're going to move around to him. And we're going to thank him and just really enjoy him today. So let's go for it. is hurting when life is so confusing I am sure of one thing God's by my side yeah when I'm feeling lonely and I start to worry I know God you're near me and you're always by my side yeah and I can lift my hands up to you I can raise my voice and sing You are who I put all hope in I will trust you in everything Can lift my hands up to you 
Tina, I don't know about you, but have you noticed how in lots of films and books that we read, there tends to be a good guy and a bad guy, or a hero and a villain? Like um, in Toy Story, there's um, Andy, the, the nice kid who has Woody and Buzz, um, and he looks after them and cares for them, but next door is the other boy called Sid, who doesn't look after the toys at all, and he's not yeah. very kind. So that would be one example. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of them, aren't they? There's um, the Lion King with, um, mm. I'm terrible with names, but there's the, there's, um, what's his Scar. name, Sarah? Scar. Scar is the, is the uh, baddie, the baddie lion. Yeah. And, um, and then he got... just wants to, he just wants to destroy. What's, what's this, what's his name? So there's Simba, who's the little one. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so Scar's always, he just wants to get rid of them. He does, doesn't he? He's not very kind at all. Um, another one, the Disney one, would be um, Aladdin. Um, so Aladdin's the oh, yeah. hero, um, but Jafar, he was the evil. Oh, yeah. There wasn't he, he yeah. wasn't very, he just wanted power himself. Yeah, yeah. And if you're thinking about a book, an old book, which I used to read, was Little Red Riding Hood, where the wolf... He's, uh, he's just he's just the baddie, just wants to uh, take what he can and isn't bothered. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, so there's, there's absolutely loads, isn't there? So I wonder if, if you can think of any as well, um, any examples of goodies or baddies uh, that you can think of in stories you know that might be films or books. Um, so you, you might want to pause the video now and see how many you can caught within like a minute or so um, and just have a chat about who the good guys were and who the bad guys were. Yeah. So we, we could say that there's a good side and an evil side. And why is this? Why is this such a theme in the stories that we know? As mm -hmm. Christians, we believe in the goodness of God, in his amazing love for us and that he is the light of the world. But have you ever considered that there's an enemy in real life too? You might have heard his name before, Satan. But here's the amazing thing. God and Satan aren't equal. God is far mightier and powerful and he loves us so, so much. All of this is truth. Satan doesn't mm -hmm. like this at all. He would rather make us believe in the lies that he tells us. But we'll come on to that more later. God reminds his people in the Bible just how amazing and good he is. He also tells us how amazing we are and that relationship he's given us is so special and precious. And he knows that we need reminding of that. He need, we need reminding how much he loves us, how much he wants to protect us. We need reminding of his truth and his promises. And one way he does that is that he helps us understand that in a book called Ephesians in the Bible. In chapter 6, he talks about the armour of God. And when the people uh, were writing uh, the Bible, they would have seen Roman soldiers walking around them. And I think, we think it reminded them of something God was trying to say. What he's put inside us is so special. And what, who God is and who we are in him is so special. It needs protecting just like a soldier needs protecting from the enemy, from arrows and swords, all those pieces of armour protected the soldier. And God's saying, we need pieces of armour to protect that that's really special within us. Today, we're focusing on the first two bits of the armour. And it's mentioned in Ephesians this is the verse. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, 
and that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Do you remember us talking about Satan and his lies a few moments ago? Well, this is something that we need protection from. Have you ever had thoughts that, where you might think, I'm not good enough, I'm not fast enough, I'm rubbish, people don't like me, I've, no one loves me. These are all lies. God doesn't see any of this. And he doesn't say any of this either. In his eyes, we are loved, forgiven and accepted. We are his children. This goes for all the adults too. So, we want everybody to put on the belt of truth now. Copy us. We're going to shout these truths out together. Are you ready? Got your belt on. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am loved. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I'm accepted. I'm accepted. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. The belt of truth. The belt on the armour kept everything in place. And in the armour of God, that's God's truth. The truth. We'll keep coming back to God's truth each week. The truth is really important. Keep thinking truth. You know that other bit in the song, you know, in, in God's suit on, your righteousness like a bulletproof vest. Well, this matches the verse that Tina read um, earlier, saying the breastplate of righteousness in place. The bulletproof vest hadn't been invented yet when, the, when Ephesians was written. But instead, the soldiers wore a breastplate. And this was a large piece of armour that covered their body from their necks to their stomachs. And it would protect the front of their body, including their heart. Righteousness, this breastplate of righteousness, is all about being right with God. Jesus took away everything that was in the way of us being right with God and he made us his children. We're accepted by him, we're loved by him, he protects us, he's faithful to us and we can protect that righteousness too by living to make God happy. The bulletproof vest line in the song is showing us the lies we talked about earlier. They can't get through the, the breastplate of righteousness. We need to remind ourselves lots and lots that God's given us his righteousness, that we're right with God, and that saying these truths over and over will, make, will mean that the lies just won't get through. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. So, shall we do those truths again? Let's get ready. Are you ready? We're going to put our belt of truth on. Put your belts on, everybody. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am loved. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I'm accepted. I'm accepted. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Well done, everybody. There are lots more truths to be discovered. Have a go at finding more.
Hi there. You might like to make a belt of truth. I've had a go at making one and I've got a suggestion for you. You could find a long piece of paper or card or it doesn't even have to be long. Cut out a length and write the word, the letters of the word truth on it. You could get a grown up to help you and then you can colour that word in. You could use a piece of cardboard. I found um, an old envelope to use. And then punch some holes in the end with a hole punch each end and I've put some string through those holes so that I can tie it all around my waist. You might want to decorate your belt of truth. You could decorate in any way you like. What I've had a go at is making some fringes, just like the Romans on their belts had fringes. And I've put a truth from the Bible on each one of these fringes that I really like and that God's shown me. You could have a go at putting some truths on some fringes too and fastening them onto your belt. I've just got to finish off fastening these fringes onto my belt and I'm using some sellotape. I chose some rainbow colour fringes. It always reminds me of God's promises and every promise of God's is truth. In there. Okay, ready. So this is my belt of truth. Right, fasten it on. I hope you have fun making a belt of truth. You don't have to put fringes on it. You could put anything you like. You could use ribbons. You could stick shiny jewels on it. Have a go at making a belt of truth. Bye. During this time of looking at the armour of God, we are going to learn the verses in the Bible where it is mentioned. Tina read it earlier in Ephesians 6. We'll do a bit at a time each week. It might help to do some of the actions from the song that we know, God Suit On, to help you remember. But they put the pieces of armour in a slightly different order, so be careful. So here's the verse then. It's from Ephesians 6 and it starts at verse 14. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled round your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. So we're going to sing God Suit On now, which is one of our favourite songs and we've been building up to it all morning. So up you get, you know that we put silly wigs on in this one, so if you've got any wigs at home and you want to join in, that's fine. Um, but really sing out the belt of truth part and the breastplate of righteousness. Let's have some fun.
great to be together again today. Have fun making your belts of truth and remember to keep shouting out and speaking out those truths. We've done some really really important stuff today so it's really important for us to pray. So let's pray together. Thank you Jesus for your truths. Thank you for accepting us, forgiving us, and loving us. Help us to remember these truths and to live in them every day. Amen. Amen. Jesus, thank you for giving us your protection. Thank you that what is in us is so special and so precious. You want it protected. Uh, Jesus, I bless every single person listening right now with your protection of your truth. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We'll see, see you next time. time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>